E questa è la forma che noi richiamo a fare le mozzarella. This is the form that they usually do to do mozzarella. Mozzarella is from southern Italy, exactly where my GRCC culinary students and I are currently touring. So we spent some time exploring this very popular and very unique cheese. First we checked out Casaficio Palmerata, a factory in Castellana where they make cheese the old way. My good friend Chef Nicola Conte explained that first the milk is cooked with rennet until the curds separate from the whey. After the curds are drained, boiling water is added and worked into the curds until they become stretchy and smooth, like taffy. Finally, they're shaped and ready to be eaten. In fact, most mozzarella is best to eat right after it's made. It doesn't age well like other cheeses. One of the talented cheesemakers showed my culinary students and I just how cool mozzarella can be. Yeah. Can you ask him what the stretching is doing? Is it, is it strengthening the, the cheese, making it tougher or? To give cons consistency. Consistency to the mozzarella itself. Ah. And this is the local milk from uh, their own farm. And this is the form they, they give to, they usually do to do mozzarella. Type we call treccia. Then they do one with, they call with a big knot, okay. which is like that. Really is a knot, like if you would tie a big yeah. rope, see? And Nicola, he, this is going into cold, cold water. Cold water. And that's setting the cheese that's, right away. That will set, yeah. And then the cheese becomes hard then. That will be ready to eat in no time. This is a large brain. A large braid. Large wow, brain. it looks like a loaf of bread, man. Yeah. Okay. You're so used to seeing it coming to you just ready, and yeah. now you can appreciate the amount of work and effort that goes into it. It's a lot of work. So when you look at a ball of mozzarella from now on, you're gonna you're gonna really see. Look at that. The burrata has the mozzarella and then he has the soft filling that next to it. It would be filled inside and oh, then it would be... Oh my goodness, look at that. that. Look at that. When there are some spare times, they will also enjoy to do other things, you know, a little bit artistic. A little pig. <laughs> That's awesome. So a little pig. Bravo. Bravo. Awesome. Bravo. He's saying, because they come here, the mothers of the young children, this for the children, it goes very, very well, because all the Italians, they, they like mozzarella, and uh, so they, they have the delights to do different little things, so they love it. What's that? <laughs> so you see? <laughs> A sucker. <laughs> okay. So he's creating a little bird as well now, you see? This is the last piece. He doesn't have long legs, he's a dog. <laughs> Donkey. No, I think he's a, he's a short... Burro. 
Is that cow? A rhino, a rhino. A rhino. It looks like a rhino to me. A horse. A horse. A horse. Wow. Cavallo. Fantastic. Nice. Fantastic. Very good. Fantastic. Fabulous. We've got this beautiful, fresh stracciatella. And this is what so went we into the burrata. That. This is what went into the burrata, and we've got burrata here, so you test after that. It looks like spaghetti to me. <laughs> mm. It's very, very creamy and rich. So we, we're going to tie this burrata, so you can see. Right. <laughs> you look the milk that comes out, the cream. It's so the... fresh. Mm. And the wall is so thin. It's still thin, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's what we live with, you know, down here. This is our specialties. They go all over. And we're quite happy with cheeses, you know, bruschetta, simple food, a little bit of olive oil, olive oil all the time, you know? We join with the family, and that's what you get on the table. We wash down with a, a, a nice glass of vino. Salute. Salute. Coming up on Cooking with Angus. So as it coagulates, you're just trying to find the right texture for it to yeah. be pulled into yeah. a piece of mozzarella. Uh, My first choice for college, GRCC. Why? Because what you learn in two years lets you transfer to a university at the top of your game. Because what you save in tuition is worth thousands of dollars. Because the hands-on learning and academic support are second to none. Because the honors program challenges you to do your best, while student life makes you feel connected to the world. All those reasons made GRCC my first choice and the best choice. At CC, it's a very diverse campus. Meeting people who uh, come from more diverse environments and communities. GRCC best prepared me, I think, for the university. Like, it wasn't a big jump to where the university had harder classes. In order to advance myself, I needed to have at least an associate's degree. And it doesn't kill your pocketbook. I'm sure we saved thousands. I think it's a better experience. This is a lot more personal. I'm glad I came. I love GRCC because I love Grand Rapids. I chose GRCC because it's close to home. I can take my time to decide what I want to do with my life. I love this campus because it's an affordable way to take basic classes. I chose GRCC because it was the best place to get reacquainted with school. Because I love being downtown. Because it's military friendly. So I can pursue my dream of being a dental hygienist. Because it offers the same educational experience as universities. The milk used to make Italian cheese doesn't just magically appear. My two GRCC culinary students needed to learn more about life on a dairy farm. So Nicola took us to Quercetta, a lovely farm in the beautiful Italian countryside. What is the name of the dog? No, he have no name. He has no name? Can we name him? Maybe. Angus. <laughs> Angus, perfect. <laughs> oh. Put your finger down to his tongue. I did. Yeah. Watch your 40 bites, you know. <laughs> so this is the nursery, Nicola? This is the nursery, this is the young cows, that, the young calves that get fed, see? 
we're on this wonderful organic farm and these animals that are in just pristine condition, just ready to go and get milked. And they, they lead to some amazing product. Yes, you're right. See, there is a, a big amount of work to be done behind the scenery before we can see all our goods and our cheeses, mozzarella. Loads of things has been done from the milk, butter, cream, you name it. And uh, there you are. This farm has a handful of special cows called Podolico cows. Wearing a grey coat, these cows produce a rare milk that's used in cacio cavallo, a stretched cheese curd. This is one of them here. This is one of them here, yes. See, the, the, the Podolica cow is grey. It doesn't have any other colors. It's very grey, light grey, dark grey. We use them just for beef and uh, milk because their milk, they produce very little milk, but their milk is really good, good to do this kind of cheese. Cacio Cavallo, it takes their name, Podolico. Yes, which is a rare product and is really, really good. And that goes all over the world as well. So once this cheese has been produced, it needs a time to age, to rest and to age. So we start from, this is a couple of months old, going to middle, four, six months, up to, to seven, eight months. The last one is 12 months. You can see the difference in this. This is one year old. One year old. And it's still edible. Still edible, and that will last another year. You would, you, the girls, you would obviously have different uses for this one compared to this one as it goes up, yes? This could be eaten fresh, but this would be maybe yes. grated or? It, it could be eaten. This one, you could do other works, more special, I would say. Thank you very much. Before leaving, we learned of a secret cellar. Only myself could take a look, so I quickly followed the owner. He's allowing me to actually see a, a, one of the grottos that have, that's absolutely full of cheese. I feel a little bit like Aladdin. You can already get the pungent smell of the, the cheese. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. It's just like a little hidden vat of cheese. Wow. And they've been here for who knows how long on their own. An Aladdin's cave of cheese. Unbelievable. Zero eight. November of eight. This is a six year old cheese. After the dairy farm, we traveled to a farmhouse specializing in culinary tourism. They featured food from the Puglia region and made their food the old way. No modern technology. From freshly baked breads by a wood fire to mozzarella cooked and hand-shaped in the kitchen. Here my students would get a sense of how Italians cooked years ago. So as it coagulates, you're just trying to find the right texture for it to yeah. be pulled into yeah. Yeah. a piece of mozzarella. Uh, so she's now putting the cheese into a form. Yeah. All right. And now it'll come out. Oh, wow. That's nice. Oh, it's so sweet. Oh, my gosh. It tastes just like pure milk. Wow, that's remarkable. Now she's going to put it into a smaller mold and probably do the pressing of it. Get rid of all the water. So it comes together. Compact. Has she been making this all her life? All her life. She would have learned how to make it. But well, she cuts it into smaller pieces now. So in goes the water to melt the curds. You can see it melting. Look at it just falling. Mm -hmm. 
she's going to get to a stage where she knows from years of experience when it's ready to pull. Mm. Oh, that's okay. They can handle that. Pull. Pull. You can or bite. you can use the hand. Better it's better with the hands. Yeah. With the hands. To bite, you, you just bite it off. No, I mean, no, no, bite, no, no. bite it with your fingers, not with your teeth. So the girls now have finally actually made their own mozzarella uh, at this farm we're at, and uh, it's been just an amazing experience to see uh, the cheese being made, and now they're actually getting the feel of the shaping, the, the actual uh, mozzarella balls and knots, which is really the best possible education they could get as far as making the cheese. Next, we got the fresh bread out of the oven and sat down to a beautiful rustic lunch made by a talented chef. And of course, the mozzarella made by ourselves. Food from Puglia is crazy good, a lesson we didn't mind learning at all. Cooking with Angus. You just oh. put in your mouth, which is really good. I love them. We get a garden tour and then we finish with a tiramisu. My first choice for college, GRCC. Why? I was ready to build a career. I traded taking notes in a classroom for hands-on learning. I found a program where I can follow my passion. What I'm saving on low tuition will pay off if I transfer to a university. And I know the skills I'm learning will build a better community. All those reasons make GRCC my first choice and the best choice. I chose GRCC because it's close to home and I like the campus. Because it's affordable. Because I love the atmosphere. Because they have a great photography program. Because they have a great psychology program. It has the same activities as any other college. Because I can get my general classes out the way. Because it's quality, affordable education. Because, because it's close to home. Because I love Grand Rapids. For medical assisting. Because it'll kickstart my future. The Puglia region of Italy has culinary treasures and a few surprises. While walking through Albrobuelo, through the Trulli houses, we came across an incredible garden. The owner was kind enough to let Nicola show us around and taste the fresh fruits, vegetables and more. You find that every of these little houses you get a, a garden on the back where people, they grow their own vegetables and fruit. As you can see, we've got pear trees all over. We've got some fresh tomatoes, they're coming along just fine. Mm -hmm. We've got some herbs, thyme, and uh, let me show you this. It's unusual. We call it cucumber. It's, it's of a family between a melon and a cucumber, oh, wow. which uh, grows these forms. We use this on the table. Every Italian table in the southern of Italy, you find something like this. Does it taste like a melon or a cucumber? It's got a sweet taste. It tastes like a cucumber, but it's got that bit of uh, sweetness which appeals to the melon. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Here we have, as you can see, another plant that grows almost wild, wildly around this area near the Mediterranean, near the coast, where we can get the bud, see this is the bud, uh -huh. the known capers to us, to our oh, culinary capers. industry. Yeah. So once we pick up these eggs from this plant, we have the little bud, the caper, which we marinated in salt or uh, in vinegar, and we, we can preserve all year round. 
you, you know, we find these, we get these little jars at home and we open the jar and we never think about, you know, where they come from. Uh, exactly. Or what it even looks like. Or what it even looks yeah. like. So there you go. This is what we call the Fioroni. Mm -hmm. So you get the first one, which will be a larger fig, really. And then at the end of September, you get the other production. This is a small one. This will be ready in September. But this, the first one, they always have a better taste. Somehow. This is the one you peel? We, we use this with some appetizers, with salami, with parma ham. But usually we eat as a fruit and we, we peel as so. It remains there and you just put it in your mouth, which is really good. I love them. You find quite popular everywhere in the gardens and back gardens of the Italian culture or this region. You find grapes, loads of grapes and other exotic fruits. And you can see here there's a <clears throat> witnessing a, an old machine that would press grapes for wine, to make wine, oh, wow. mm -hmm. which is called Torchio. So this would okay. be per a personal, like an individual family's yes, yes, wine press? Yes, wow. absolutely. Angus, we, we have here a nice little surprise we've been giving to us. It's the, our own homemade tiramisu. Oh, wow. Our lady there, she just made it five minutes ago from fresh eggs from our own hands. You have to make the zabaione with the eggs and the layer of cream, the zabaione, the savoyard in biscuits, soaked in coffee, and then it's topped up with the crumbs of biscuit. <laughs> so dig, dig in. Dig in. <laughs> that is just amazing. Nicola, I, I want to express our thanks to these gentlemen for taking us through this garden. It's been just the most incredible experience for my students just to see this variety of fruit and vegetables and herbs that we don't really understand and to see them growing and eating and when we pick them off the trees they're so fresh and so sweet. Cioè di vivere le stesse sensazioni che viviamo noi tutti i giorni. So he's saying that this is our daily life and is our hospitality and they wouldn't do otherwise than to let you feel at home. That's what they do for everybody, you know? That's how we really... Okay? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up on Cooking with Angus. Then we're gonna fill with some, we've got here mozzarella mixed with some tomato. My first choice for college, GRCC. Why? Because I was ready to take my future into my own hands, and GRCC gave me that opportunity. Because the money that I'm saving on the low cost of tuition, I'll use to earn my bachelor's degree. Because I'm making connections to build my career. Because while I share my ideas with other students, I'm pushed to challenge my limits by my professors. All those reasons made GRCC my first choice and the best choice. After a wonderful day in Puglia, Italy, we ended the night with a dinner at a family farmhouse. This typical Italian family happens to be friends with my friend Nicola. Mariella was doing most of the cooking, and before getting into the meal, she worked with my students to show them panzerotti, a delicious Italian dish featuring the mozzarella we had learned so much about. Mariella is doing the first stretching to do this panzerotti, okay? We have uh, the dough made from soft durum wheat, 
and with addition with some water and some milk and our beautiful olive oil. Everywhere is olive oil, okay? We need some yeast to allow the, the dough to rise. to rise. Once the dough has, is risen, then we start to do the little balls, okay? Mm -hmm. It's just like bread, mm -hmm. and we put them on the side. Then we're gonna fill with some, we've got here mozzarella mixed with some tomato. So is so, this dish typical of Puglia? This is a very typical dish in Puglia and everybody loves this. And when we gather with friends, as we're doing this evening, mm -hmm. that's what we do. Panzerottata, we call it. And then it goes along with other things, you know, like fave, like rabbits, like whatever we can put their hands on. Poco. Sì, poco, so, pochissimo, basta così, va bene. Ok. Fare così, passare il materello sì. e poi... Togli la passata, la Maria. Passa il sì? Sì. Basta? Ok. Bene. All right. There you go, you go a spoon measurement. All right. Excellent. So in this, in this case we don't add any seasoning mm -hmm. to either there or when we're, you know, the f finished product, before you fold it, there is no seasoning, just plain like that. Wow. You will get you loads of flavor because there is the milk in the dough, there is the olive oil in the mm -hmm. dough, and you'll see the flavor you'll get. Wow. And you're adding more olive oil. That's cool. You made the half moon. Excellent. So you see the color? Okay. The oil is very hot, so be careful. No, no, the hands, no sun. Yeah. When you cook in them, you need to put them all at the same time because otherwise, some they will be yes, and then the cook can even you're right. So Marielle is saying that she's happy to have us here that you really did very well and you love these specialities and mm. are they good? Oh, very wow, good. excellent, delicious. grazie. The mozzarella is so, so fresh. Yes, but uh, you've seen what process goes from the milk, from the cows mm -hmm. to the table there right. and to making of the mozzarella. We so, saw the cows, and, uh, we saw the mozzarella and now we eat. There you go. <laughs> Hospitality is at the heart of these Italians. This was one of the best dinners we had our entire trip. We were accepted into the fold and treated like family. The food and the flavors were amazing, and so was the company. Next time on Cooking with Angus. This market is unbelievable. Does this happen every single day? When you're fishing, do you ever think about how the fish is going to end up on the plate? Yeah, bad boy, you.